Let's talk about Chinese disk detainer locks for a few moments. I've been working on these for a while and uh, I'm starting to see more and more of these securing some pretty valuable things. I've um, I noticed they're on sale. You can buy these typical, here's an example, this is a Howdy brand, but they're all pretty much made, I think, pretty much in the same factories. Uh, they're pretty low quality locks as I'll demonstrate here in a moment and pretty easy to open, but I'm going to show you how they work and give you some comparisons with some quality locks, some of the things to look for. But I just wanted to have a quick way to open them in case I get a call out, somebody lost their keys, I didn't want to be messing around trying to open them for a while. So the first thing I want to show you is a, what I, is a high quality lock. And here is a, uh, this was an ABIS, this is a cutaway, as you can see. And inside of there are the discs on the bottom that you can see there. I'll try to get a close up here. And then the way that they work is as we stick the proper key in and then we rotate them, you'll notice that those grooves, now there's two types of grooves uh, on a quality lock. There's the deep groove, and you, there you see two of them, and then there's a bunch of shallow grooves, and those are called false gates. And those are to deceive us, so that makes it difficult for us to pick. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But when we rotate the key, you'll notice that those deep grooves at some point will all line up, and then they will rotate. Now notice on the very top there is a, uh, oops, there's this sidebar and this one happens to be solid hardened steel and it fits into this groove on the top. So if the grooves are not lined up on the discs this bar will block the rotation. Now if we use a proper key or the proper picking technique these deep grooves will all line up beneath the bar and then again I'm going to turn it and continue turning the key and, it, and then the bar, oops, the bar will fall down into that series of grooves and then the camming action will push that out of the way and then the entire cylinder. Now notice this cylinder, if I can get my screw on, notice this part of the cylinder is made from steel as well so there's no way we're going to be able to compress anything inside of this quality lock. The entire cylinder then rotates and then of course it all lines up, sidebars out of the way lock opens. Easy. Okay, that's how a quality lock should work. All hardened steel and uh, the steel cylinder. Well, let's take a look at our Howdy locks. Again, this is a, a simple example. Uh, got the same type of key, uh, not quite as complex as the Avis, but it works exactly the same way. Turn it, everything lined up, sidebar dropped, and then the hasp opens. And you'll notice the hasp, we have the uh, the half moon shape, the half moon cut out on the half, so that tells us there's ball bearings inside. So it might lead you to believe that the locking mechanism is pretty solid. Uh, that's one of the things that we do look for. Now let's go back to the Avis real quick. Quality lock, and in fact it does say hardened on here, and I like to check that. And one of the ways to check is to take a pocket knife, or, or in this case I have a hacksaw, and just take it and just run it across that hasp or the what you suspect is hardened steel and when you cut it, it'll slide, it's like trying to cut glass it's almost impossible, no matter how many licks you give it, it keeps sliding off and if you look close, there's like no damage, a couple of tiny scratches on the chrome, that's it well let's take a look at our Howdy lock, uh, or our Chinese manufacturer lock, it also says hardened uh, and then we'll take the same hacksaw and then we'll give that a couple of licks. And I'm just going to give it a couple of licks. I don't want to create too many metal shavings. That's enough. And then you'll notice the marking is rather significant. With just a couple of licks, I've put some pretty significant good cut in there. So I think you realize 20 or 30 licks, we've cut through that hasp. But sawing on a lock is pretty obvious. You know, it doesn't, it's not so professional. There's got to be other ways. And, and indeed there are. But that's just one uh, aspect of quality. The body also is not hardened steel. In fact, the body on these Chinese locks is very cheap. It's almost always made from cast or pot metal. And you can see a couple of licks and I've done some pretty significant damage. You'd never do that on an abloy or any of the Abus locks. Well, I've opened one up. Let's look a little bit deeper. And I thought these were really going to be difficult to machine. when in fact, it turned out to be pot metal and I went through it very, very quickly. Uh, uh, you can see the ball, they do indeed have the ball bearing on the inside as locking mechanism and the ball bearings are held back by these plastic liners. It's not steel, it's made from plastic. So when 
it's locked. The sidebar, which looks like this, fits into this small groove. If I get the camera to focus, there we go. And it sits off to the side, and you can see it's a hand-filed groove, and it sits in there. And I'll drop this. And you can see that as it rotates, the flat sides will then line up and allow the ball bearings to drop, which then, of course, we're going to open. So here's a one possible weakness, and that would be this plastic part. Uh, metal in the quality locks doesn't compress, doesn't break. Plastic, of course, does. We can easily deform it, and we can break it simply by... Perhaps we can shove a screwdriver up inside of there and turn it, and we can lever it, and that will cause it to compress and open. Or there are other ways that I've discovered. Here's one that I've removed from that machined open lock. You can see the sidebar uh, fits into that slot right here. And then as we rotate it, they all line up, and then, of course, the entire thing will rotate as the sidebar goes down. Now the reason I'm showing you this is because it shows you uh, yet another weakness. We have the plastic body which we could easily overwhelm with torque from a screwdriver, but there's an even weaker part and that's this part right here. But before we get there, there's other ways we can open this. Now there are the traditional ways, and the traditional ways, and this is my first option, uh, is to buy one of these uh, purpose-built picks. This is probably the most common one that you'll find online. I think this one's around 20 or 25 bucks. And you can see it goes in. We apply torque with this part with the two screws on it. And then we manipulate each of those discs, and there are eight of them, until they all line up. Now, why is it easy to do that? Because the Chinese discs look like this. This is one of the eight. The key goes in the center. Here's the stop, so we can't rotate it, over-rotate it. And then you'll notice right here we have a groove. There's only one groove for that sidebar to fit into. There are no false gates. So it's very easy to pick. You simply rotate it. it the safety bar grinds along the outside. And then literally you will feel a clunk as that safety bar falls into that groove. And you know you've got it. So to pick one of these locks using one of these purpose-built picks, even with minimal experience, you can get it done in probably about 10 minutes. There are many of them available on the market. Here's another one. This one is designed to pick ABUS locks. Same principle. To apply torque with this one. Rotate each of the discs individually with that. And then lastly, you can spend a lot of money. That's about 100 bucks. And then here's another one. This one's designed to defeat the uh, granite lock. Same principle, except on the bottom it has bottom torque. But same principle. You apply torque. You manipulate each individual disc, sliding it back and forth. And this one's even graduated, so you can even see which disc you're on, and you can even decode it if you choose. But we're not going to decode these Chinese ones, since we're never going to to uh, make a key for these. I mean, at $3.50, we'd be crazy to do that. So let's go back and look very closely at this silver piece right here. And I have another one for you. Let's take a very quick look at this. This is what holds the guts in. This is the last piece. So when the Chinese builders shove the cylinder, all the discs in place, they push this in and compress, compression fit it, and this small ring, this steel clip, is what holds that uh, entire blocking mechanism together. And to me, this is the weak point of all of these Chinese logs. So it have this, this fairly cheap retainer with this very light gauge steel retainer clip. Now let's take a look at some of the others. I've bought a bunch of these things. Here is a, a DO Extra Security. And again, we've got that same type of clip in place. You can see it even rotates. It works exactly the same as the other one. Uh, here's a, one called a Hermex. I bought this one in South America, but it's, I believe, also Chinese made. Probably in that same factory, we got that same cheap compression fitting. Here's a uh, Kiko top security, and this is a really heavy lock. Of course, it cuts very easily. Same type of retainer, and you can see this one rotates as well. And lastly, at least here in Virginia, these are the only ones I could buy. Here's one. It looks like the Glock logo for a pistol, but it's a Fuloy brand. Same thing. Same little cheap piece of junk. So how do we do these things, and why am I wasting your time? Well, let's take a look. If we can find a way to remove that... Uh, uh, that disc 
from the end, that if we can simply pop it out, all the guts will come out. So give me a second to get the camera arranged here. Oops, sorry. So if we can simply find a way to remove, get this centered, this piece. Now, here's my pick. I'm going to call this a screwdriver pick. All we have to do is remove that piece, and then all the guts will fall out. So let's see if we can't do that. And we just pry it up like so. And then make sure I stay in frame here. And then I'm going to move the camera again. Sorry about this. Before I dump everything, all we do is we dump out all the discs, as you see there. And then we can look inside and we can see our safety bar or our sidebar. We can get the camera to focus there. All we need to do is move that sidebar, dump it out, and then rotate the disc by hand. Or we can simply pull the disc out, which would be even easier. Well, I said it would. And get a pair of pliers here. Come on. Pull that disc out. Okay, the disc is now out, and then the ball bearings will pump. In fact, the hasp completely comes apart. So you can see that's much faster than 10 minutes of picking, much faster than uh, uh, trying to saw through it. Uh, so whenever you see a Chinese manufacturer lock with one of these cheap discs, get your special lock pick tool, your screw driving tool, and just pry that dude out of there dump the guts, and then the hasp literally will fall out. All right, well, thank you for your time, and uh, stay safe and stay legal.